Hey guys, um, welcome back. Now, what we're going to do in this video is uh, a few things. And one of these things is um, um, if we are now aiming, we can see the crosshair now and uh, it, it uh, changes position, but um, we are not changing the, the hands aiming. So we're going to um, make the animation so when you're aiming, it will actually raise its uh, weapon a little bit. Uh, all right, so to do that, we're gonna change uh, our animator. Uh, let's first make a new uh, parameter for uh, um, a boolean. Let's call this is aiming. Now we are only gonna control our arm, so we're gonna create a new mask, just like we did with the with the spine. Let's so let's create a new mask. Uh, where it is the after mask? Let's call these arms. And in our layers for our animator, maybe make this a little bit larger. Uh, let's also create a new layer. Let's call this um, arms, or maybe aiming. And hit the cockwheel and change it to a weight of one. And the arms mask and the blending should be override yeah so now with the arm selected go to your transform import the skeleton from your avatar from the SWAT avatar and let's see let's first disable everything and the only, only thing we need are the shoulders so enable the right shoulder and the left shoulder all right uh, this won't do anything, but if you click here, it will disable everything. I'm not really sure if it's needed though. Okay, so now with that done, um, let's create a new uh, empty state in our aiming layer. Let's call this uh, idle. And the motion for it will be uh, idle aiming, uh, idle. Yeah, not aiming, just idle. Now create a new state. Let's call this uh, aiming. And the motion for it should be idle aiming. Doesn't, um, yeah, idle aiming. And let's create new transitions. One to aiming, one back to idle. And this should say, um, the condition should be, is aiming true? And this one, of course, is aiming false. Make sure you uncheck has exit time for both. All right. Now uh, let's dock it here again. Let's see what this does. Oh no, we don't. We don't have anything. Oh, there we go. Now let's select the player's uh, avatar like so, so we can see what it's doing. Now you can see it's it's now um, doing the idle, but everything is still the same. Now let's change the is aiming parameter. Now you can see it's raising its it raises arm, and now it went to is aiming. There we go. And if you uncheck it again, it will lower uh, his hands. Uh, one thing: if your weapon is now when you're aiming. Let's switch to the scene. If your hands aren't the way you want, uh, if the weapon isn't the way you want right now, so it's here, here it's pretty good aligned to my shoulder, but if it doesn't, uh, make sure you select your uh, weapon and then change the position of your model by just like changing it around body is uh, but with the uh, active weapon the model and copy this uh, these values when you made it made your changes and then paste them uh, back um, here when you're done so it will uh, adjust it accordingly to, the, to your hands okay now um, let's check one more thing now if we are aiming um, there we go and I crouch you can see the weapon isn't 
in our is isn't uh, positioned correctly. So that's because we have a different aiming. Uh, the, the hands are, are different, so we have a different aiming animation for it. So let's create a new empty state in our uh, aiming layer. Uh, let's call this um, aiming crouched. And the motion for it should be the idle crouching aiming. All right. And let's make a transition from aiming to aiming crouched and make a transition back as well. And uh, two condition should be uh, is crouched true. Back should be is crouched false. There we go. But we also need one back to idle because if we are aiming when we are crouched and we stop to aim, it will stay here unless we make a transition back where it says uh, is aiming false. Okay, let's check that out. So now we are uh, aiming. Uh, I need to cancel out every time to give a mouse pointer because I got it hidden. We'll fix that later. Um, so let's go to the parameters. Let's check is aiming. Now it uh, raises the weapon. As you could see, it raised the weapon. And now we are toggling crouched. Oh, we need to, of course, press our button for it. There we go. And now the weapon stays where we want because it switched to aiming crouched. Uh, it's still, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So if we go like this, we can see that it aims properly. Now if we uh, stop crouching, it goes back. One more thing, I forgot to um, uh, check the exit time so you can see what, what happens. If I aiming like this and I stop, it will wait until the animation is done. So remove the has exit times. And then we should be able, crouched, there we go. Okay, we're gonna fix this now as well, this rear uh, animation. Okay, so that's for the um, for the animation. Now we need to uh, animate it. So let's make a new animator. Animator set bool to toggle is aiming um, value, and this should be our um, game manager instance local player. Uh, player state and then we take the weapon state if that equals uh, aiming and of course also for or aim firing so this will set the boolean to true if um, one of these is true Okay, so let's check that. If I hit uh, my right mouse, it will raise its weapon and now it will go down if I, okay. Right now it stayed, um, oh, I think I forgot the exit time on this one, yeah. So now if I release, it will do. If you want to increase the speed of which the uh, weapon is raised, you can see it takes a, a little longer. You can play around with this uh, transition between the aiming. So if we look at the aiming true, if you reduce this one, it should go a little bit faster. Oh well, fiddle around with it. Um, Okay, so that, uh, that pretty much works. Now let's check at the um, uh, first. Yeah, let's first check the uh, uh, the crosshair. So what we're gonna do? Uh, let me see crosshair. 
So if we aim now, our um, our weapon is not directly firing at the crosshair. Uh, before I show it, let's first um, reduce my sound effects a little bit, the volume, because it's mm -hmm. very loud when I'm uh, when I'm uh, trying to show you. So now you can see it's not it's always in the direction of the weapon. So that makes it a little bit difficult to um, shoot or control it uh, anyway. So um, what we're going to do, we're going to aim at the crosshair. So to do that, we open up our, uh, I think our shooter from our shared scripts folder. Let's make a new uh, serialized field. Let's call this uh, transform uh, aim target. I should fix this uh, out of formatting though. And now when we are, f so with this um, edit, when we are uh, firing, we say uh, muzzle set rotate, uh, look at. And then we look at the aim target. Now, because the instantiate uh, will copy over the rotation of our uh, muscle rotation. So if we look at this right now, you can see, um, I, sh I should assign it, of course. So let's go to our uh, assault rifle. Now our aim target. Let's drag in the crosshair to the aim target. Now you see it goes uh, in the upper left of our crosshair. See? That's because our crosshair is uh, like a rectangle around it. It will go to the upper left of it. Uh, so to change that, we need to adjust the position of the crosshair a little bit. So open up the crosshair script. Um, so when we draw the texture and we set the position, we simply uh, remove one uh, size divided by two and also for the screen position Y. So it will reduce the half of the, of the position of the width uh, from the X position and also from, from the eye. So let's check it again. There we go, it's perfectly to the center, and if we move down as well. Now as you can see, especially when we are crouched, the crosshair is a little bit higher than our weapon is. So uh, that's because we were fiddling around with it. So if you re uh, remove the positions from this one, let's keep this one at 15 so it will uh, aim a little bit uh, down down in a distance. There we go. It should be a little bit lower. Still aiming up. So, and I also think if you want to aim something in the distance. Now, we are now currently positioning the crosshair like 15 meters in front of us. But let's increase that to maybe like uh, 100. Now, you don't see it here pretty much. But you can see it now. The weapon is firing a little bit different. Now if we remove, I mean um, lower the crosser as well, maybe around uh, minus 10. Uh, yeah. It should be okay. So minus 10 and 100 for the crosshair, minus 10 and 100. Okay, now with that fixed, um, what we're going to try next is maybe uh, give our player something to shoot at, um, something else than the, than the cube. And what we will make will be like a shooting range target. Um, okay, so let's start with a new empty game object. Let's call this uh, uh, shooting range target. Name it whatever, whatever, what it actually is as well. Make sure we center it. Create a 
let's create a quad here um, if you're unsure what a quad is um, let me hide the player here uh, we should add some maybe also great uh, material for the ground um, ground let's make this uh, a grassy kind of color and just assign it to the ground plane all right now if you look at the quad the quad is um, it's like uh, uh, a sing uh, two vertices, uh, two tri triangles, and only one way is uh, one side is rendered, so it's very cheap to use. Uh, so let's call this uh, front, and let's make another one. Let's duplicate it, and um, call this one back, and rotate this one 180 degrees. So. Now we have a double-sided uh, quad. Now let's make a uh, new material, duplicate uh, this one. Let's call this um, uh, shooting range target front. And duplicate that one as well and call this the back. Now the back will be like a darkish color. Alright, let's assign it to the back by dropping it. And now for the front, we're going to use a texture, which you can download from the um, from the description down below if you want, or you can Google Google one uh, shooting range target. So let's drag it in the textures folder. Oh wait, I got a grass texture. Yeah, I forgot. I created a simple grass texture. Uh, you can also download this one and let's uh, assign this to the uh, to the ground plane now to the ground material sorry uh, remove the ground now change the tiling because the tiling is fairly big now if you increase the tiling maybe I'm not really sure 15 let's show the player to get a better reference oh, I think this is fair enough so 15 um, okay back to the front of the shooting range target and let's um, drag this one in which will create a new material um, here so that's not what we want let's remove it um, assign this front uh, material now with the front selected just drag in the texture here and let's get it back to white okay now we want to have the uh, the pivot on the bottom so we can flip it backwards so just uh, gonna raise this one uh, by yeah half one uh, point five so then this one is exactly uh, centered so we can rotate this uh, around when we shoot it all right now we need a script for it so in our combat let's create a new C sharp script let's call it shooting range target <clears throat> let's also just uh, assign it to the uh, shooting range target now okay now uh, let's open it up and uh, get rid of this now what we're gonna do we're gonna first we're gonna inherit this one from uh, from a destructible so we are able to uh, destroy it because what we're gonna do when it when it's destroyed we're gonna flip it backwards and after a certain amount of time we're gonna flip it back up again so let's make a serialized field for um, rotation speed uh, so it's of course a float uh, now I'm all confused about um, Windows and Mac uh, all right so float rotation speed and also uh, like I said something to uh, repair it so let's call this repair time um, when we start we want to know the initial rotation 
to store um, and also a target rotation as a quaternion uh, where we will rotate to and also let's make a boolean uh, require uh, requires rotation or something uh, never mind that okay so when we start the game we're going to set the initial rotation uh, when we are d destroyed we're going to set the target rotation to the rotation we want to go to then we set that it requires a rotation and then we will rotate to the target rotation within the uh, rotation with the rotation speed so uh, when we awake we set the initial rotation to the transforms rotation okay now let's override our uh, die method uh, so which occurs when the destructible dies or gets destroyed uh, we're gonna say target rotation equals the uh, let me see quaternion and then we take the Euler uh, so which is a, a vector well, I mean we can use a vector and we can say transform uh, right uh, times 90 so this means we are transforming uh, sorry, uh, getting a rotation 90 degrees from our right angle of the transform. Okay, so uh, then we say require require rotation equals true. Uh, let's use our uh, game manager timer to um, make it r rotate back again as well. So the instance timer add. Uh, what we're gonna add is a new uh, delegate here and we're gonna do that in repair time okay now what we're gonna do when the timer hits we're gonna say target rotation equals initial rotation and then we say require rotation equals true again because in our uh, update uh, we say if requires if, if not requires rotation just break out and otherwise we will rotate our transform so transform uh, rotate and then we gonna lerp uh, around two rotations which will be our transforms rotation towards our target rotation um, and we're gonna do it in rotation well, with speed of rotation speed time uh, times time uh, delta time okay so when the target rotation is like 90 degrees from our initial rotation it will flip backward and otherwise it will target to our uh, rotate to our initial rotation and it will flip back okay so now uh, we check if the transforms rotation if that equals our target rotation we say requires rotation false so it will not keep on doing uh, this uh, to the end of days um, yeah that looks uh, pretty uh, good I think now let's head over to our script or to our uh, to unity let's say hit points is one rotation speed I don't know five repair time two seconds which is pretty low right now but it's just for testing okay let's enable our player again uh, okay let's move our player back as well there we go now let's see if we shoot it hmm nothing happens uh, why not uh, it could be our let me see. Uh, let's check if it takes damage. Uh, take damage. Print uh, damage received. Let's see. Oh yeah, I see what I forget. We don't have any colliders on our. Um, yeah, we don't have a collider on the shooting range targets now to prevent this from happening that we forget it again let's go to the destructible 
because uh, let me see does it require mm, this requires uh, a collider so require component type of uh, yeah collider now I'm not really sure what type of collider it will add so let's remove the script and now let's add the uh, edit again and oh, there we go mesh collider, box collider, sphere collider or whatever so it tells us we need to add a collider now uh, this is actually good um, so we're not uh, saying you require a box or you require a sphere we just or, or anything we require a type of any collider so to add this shooting range target to uh, I'm sorry to add the destructible to any of our game objects we first need to add a collider so let's add a collider and let's make it a box collider in this case and let's make it now let's add the shooting range target and now it accepts it okay now let's take a look also uh, this is off center right now because we uh, raised up uh, this part so let's raise up the collider uh, with it as well uh, set the uh, center of it and now let's make it a little bit smaller by reducing the z-axis 0.1 now let's give it one hit point uh, five rotation and two repair time there we go now it drops and it comes back up again. okay Cool. Um, let's see. With the uh, this, this works pretty well. Now I thought we were we would go run into an uh, a small issue here, but apparently I I forgot to uh, I already fixed it without showing you uh, what I've done. But let's check it out. No. No, it's still not done. But you know what's what what the problem is? If we open up the projectile, we are which is the bullets we are firing. And let's see if we are if we can uh, change it. Let's make a little bit more distance here. So now, if I want to shoot it, you can see it takes pretty long. You now it sometimes even doesn't hit it. There it goes. Uh, although we are hitting it now even if I uh, if I'm going to increase the speed even more of the bullet which I in the end won because this is maybe not fast enough uh, for what I want so if I go to the prefab of the bullet and I increase the speed to like 120 which is a better speed I think there we go you see, sometimes it just simply doesn't hit the... Although I'm shooting at it. It not, it's not detecting any hits anymore. The problem of that is that we are uh, translating. Let me see, we're also checking a trigger, so maybe... Uh, this is the collider, of course. Uh, we are translating, uh, and it's possible that we are not detecting the hit of the of the collider on the uh, on the target like so because it will be uh, when it's coming in checking and it could be a pass between it without us detecting the hit but to to give that uh, to look that to make it a little bit better we're gonna do uh, instead of on trigger enter we're gonna raycast it so uh, if you're new at ray casting, it's it's very uh, uh, straightforward to use. So we have a hit, uh, which is our result, maybe you can call it. So if then we say if uh, physics raycast, and there are a bunch of overloads which you can use, but uh, for now we're going to use uh, this one, where we give in the transforms position and we say the direction of the hit which is basically think of it of a line uh, projecting forward in this case then 
because we say transform forward so we're drawing a line in front of our game object and uh, we say um, uh, let me see we could give it a distance there we go we're gonna say uh, we say out hit so basically that's a keyword which will we divine the the hit on, on uh, right here and we say out hit so it will like provide information to the hit um, in this in this method and then it will give back our hit with all the results of it so to speak now let's give it a distance as well let's make it like a distance is will be uh, 15 or something like that or maybe five it doesn't really matter for now so that's the length of the of our uh, of our ray cost of our ray cost and then we say um, let's rename this one to check um, destructible or something and which will take uh, transform and then we can remove this one now when we are done we say check destructible in our raycast check this uh, destructible out uh, sorry hit transform okay so now we have a length of five in front of us we will check if it collides with something let's see what it does there we go much better okay cool now uh, I think the shooting range target is not uh, very cool right now so let's make it a little bit larger like so much better let's get rid of the uh, the big cube we don't need it anymore and let's make a few more of these let's move this back um, duplicate this uh, around a little bit using control D or uh, command D uh, even like if we if we duplicate it it's duplicated and I hold my control key then it snaps to the grid a little bit now let's make it uh, one two three four five one two three four five and now let's duplicate these one two three four five maybe one two three maybe something like this okay so now the speed could be a little bit uh, higher now when I uh, let's make um, sorry I don't I don't hope you uh, feel a lot too lot uh, too long with it let's first increase the uh, the repair uh, maybe increase the repair time repair time to like uh, 30 seconds and rotation speed to 8 maybe first reduce to 1 so we can better check well you can you should do whatever you prefer here I'm gonna change it again yeah 12 seems to be uh, good for me 12 repair time 30 seconds now let's make a prefab out of it by dragging it in our prefab folder and now let's duplicate it one two three four five maybe even six then one two three four five six there we go this one as well okay it's a uh, it's okay I guess Uh, I think we should we shouldn't allow the player to shoot when he's moving but that's a gameplay decision um, we will have to figure out uh, later on okay um, one more thing I would like to do is um, uh, change a little bit of the sounds uh, what you can do go to the free sounds dot or description uh, find the link in the description below and Google for uh, I mean search for the sounds made by snowman 
um, which you can use to prototype your game. He, uh, th these are much better uh, walking sounds than I have, so I'm gonna use the grass uh, sounds. So um, let's check that real quick. Let's go to the sound effects. Let's increase it by one. And let's drag in the grassy uh, effects from him. Or you might have better sounds too that, that doesn't... If, well, if you don't, you can use these. Now let's see how it turns out. Yeah, I think that's it. this is a little bit better. But I'm also going to reduce the volume a little bit more. Not that overwhelming. Maybe even less. Yeah. Still have to fix this uh, <laughs> this thingy here. But, uh, but yeah. Okay. So with that done, um, I'm gonna conclude this video, and I'll see you in the next. Oh, one more one more thing. You might have seen this uh, 100 here to the bottom left of our player's health. Uh, I didn't do a video about it, but uh, currently it's not doing anything. Uh, might be something for a later video. Okay, take care.